Well, it's December, and December can be kind of a slow gardening month, but there are still things to do in December, and that's what we're talking about today. Welcome to the Road by Road Gardening Show, the best dead gum gardening show on the internet, where we talk about gardening, a little bit of cooking, and growing your own food. Now sit back and enjoy. Hey, I'm Greg. I'm Sheila. Woo, man. It's turned off a little cool, warm back up. Warm back up. We don't know what to do, do we? No. That's the thing about South Georgia wintertime. Short sleeve one day and long sleeve the next day. But you know what? As we've talked about before, you guys up north have y'all's benefits, but here in the south, we get to enjoy things way deep into the fall mm -hmm. and early into the spring. We still got papers making. I do. I've got some that I covered up for that cold spell bell peppers and jalapenos but then i've got those um aren't you sweet right to red and the yellow ones i didn't cover those up and they're still doing good i actually ate some cherry tomatoes out of the garden yeah. yesterday oh you're just gonna bring some yep i forgot to but anyhow cherry tomatoes we of course we got greens out Woo, greens, greens are coming in like yeah. crazy See what else we got going on, man. Cabbages, cabbages, cabbage. cabbage. My um, Mr. Big P's blooming. Mm -hmm. uh, Radishes growing. My carrots is growing. Beets. I got beets some beets is growing. I pulled up one of my carrots and they're doing good. Yep, we can actually cessation plant beets and radishes around here. We can keep them going. I got some radishes. Excuse me, some beets are just coming up, and I got mm -hmm. some more that's already up. So, keeping those succession plants, those radishes, beets, even your greens, even folks, broccoli and cauliflower down as deep south as what we live. Mm -hmm. Now, for you folks up north, our heart goes out to you because you can enjoy all these wonderful vegetables all winter long like we can. But our friend up in uh, Ohio, Mike Smith, sent me a picture the other day, and he covered his cauliflower up. But he still has cauliflower. He has covered it cover with the mm -hmm. frost protection. Now, his broccoli took a little bit of a hit, but his cauliflower, being that it was enclosed or pretty much mm -hmm. enclosed in them leaves, I think, helped it a little bit. So you do get to enjoy certain things if you take care of them and prepare for that cold weather that's come along to help insulate mm -hmm. and protect that plant from some of the cold. There are some things you can do. Mm -hmm. And I've been busy preserving you know, one thing that uh, most people don't understand is you preserve way into the wintertime. Yeah, I do. I do. And uh, um, I did some uh, kohlrabi, mm -hmm. fermenting it three ways. And uh, I've done a video on it. It'll come out probably in a week or so. But we've never um, fermented or any preserved kohlrabi in any way. Mm, I've not. So that shall be interesting. And you've got a freeze dryer, not a freeze dryer, a dehydrator, excuse I me, do. a small a dehydrator. Small dehydrator. And that baby has not turned off in the last three to four weeks. It has hummed 24 7 around our house. She's done dehydrating. Oh my. If, Roselle. If it stayed on the counter peppers. very long, it got dehydrated. <laughs> I hear that thing all during the night. <laughs> and, uh, Got something else on the way? I do. I pulled that trigger on that freeze dryer a couple weeks ago and it hasn't got here yet. I got my space all saved, cleaned out, and ready. We went back and forth on the Harvest Right freeze dryer. She finally settled in on the medium. The medium, mm hmm. I think that'll be fine for us. Yep. Cannot wait. If you're not familiar with freeze dryers, as I was not, it's pretty interesting what all it'll do. Yeah, you can do so much more with it, and the food turns out differently. Um, it's shelf stable for 25 years. Which will probably outlast us. So you're meaning to say we can do meals that's going to outlast us? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you can take your leftovers, like leftover spaghetti, pretty much anything, and throw it in the freeze dryer. I'm not sure I want 25 years of spaghetti. <laughs> I'm just not sure about that. Never know. Mm. Might be hard times. You appreciate that. 25 year old spaghetti. Yeah. Eggs. Eggs. Milk. Milk. Yeah. The um, other thing I got going, and you're helping me with this, is the Roselle has been very productive this year. And this is the wine that I started 
Thursday was, Thursday will be two weeks ago. So I'm doing a large container, but I'm also doing a gallon container so that I can show y'all, look at those bubbles. Yep. I can show y'all how to do it on a smaller level if you don't have all the equipment like I have, because it can be done. It can be done in a gallon container. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's cool. For somebody starting out, that's probably the way to go because you do These are easy to find. Now you would have to buy airlock. Yeah, but you can find those online and you do run the risk of not knowing what you're doing or having the confidence of making a mistake right. in running your batch. You ain't running the whole rurt. Rurt, that's a southern thing. Rurt the whole thing <laughs> if you just do a gallon. Yeah, but I'm so excited to have enough. And the Roseal are actually, they're kind of, they got bit by the frost, but some of them are bouncing back, but I'm having trouble with the um, calyx falling off before it even blooms. I'm not sure. I think it's some of these cold, cold nights we've had. It's my guess. I don't know. Mm. But it's I think I'm going to be okay. Yep. And we've been making tea. You drink this every night. I don't yeah. drink it quite every night, but you drink it every be night. Be careful. You'll and, spill there easily. And we shake, do. Would you shake it up? Oh, I didn't shake it. I can't shake it up. Well, can. Mess, can I? Yeah. All right. You promise? If you got the lid on there, good. All right. Here we go. Okay, that's good. All right, that's good. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just like it. I don't want to say plain. It's the recipe I did on the video. Um, it has lemon juice, orange juice, and honey. But and we it's, can it's an acquired taste, but I, I kind of only... I'm, I'm trying it to see if it'll help my some of my medical issues. So I'm taking it regularly. So we we drink this cold and hot as a tea mm -hmm. also. So it's whether you just, which way where you like it. Cheers. So this has a lot of antioxidants. Beneficial antioxidants and an anti-inflammatory properties too. An antioxidant. It's the same thing? Kinda, yeah. I didn't know that. Anyhow, yeah, it's good for you. I mm -hmm. think it's the basis of that. It's really good for you. I've been taking some medicine, and you told me last night that the medicine I've been taking probably didn't have as much mm -hmm. benefits as this does. Right. But So that's good right there. And what else did we make out of that? The rosé, we got wine, we got tea, and then we've got... Jelly or jelly. jam. It's really kind of a mix between jelly and jam. So the, the rosé didn't quite get as... As a uh, thick. There's a spreading right there. Oh. Spreader. Spreader. Biscuit. And I made these biscuits this morning. <laughs> Sheila made these walk biscuits. Y'all know what a walk biscuit is? She walked that can of <laughs> <laughs> You shouldn't tell me. I they look up until they can biscuits. <laughs> I was having to work today in the office. Yeah, yeah. You didn't have a lot of time to spread out no homemade biscuits. No, did I didn't. I can't do but so much at one time. So we've been in really, we've been drinking Roselle, we've been eating Roselle, we've had these for, for breakfast a few mornings there. Now, it's not near as thick as what regular jelly is, so you would call this more jam? Yeah. And why is it not thick? Well, jelly, you use just the um, juice. Jam, you use um, some of the pulp, pulp. and the juice. Now the first batch I made was thicker than this. Look at that. Yeah, it's pretty good. Now I don't like something real sweet that overpowers the flavor. Now this is sweet, but it doesn't overflower the natural flavors of the jelly. I don't like to eat jams and jellies that are just all you taste is sugar. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. That'd be good on some pancakes too. Mm -hmm. And also, we've got that. Yeah, so all my sesumas, <laughs> all yeah. my sesumas that I didn't know what to do with, I squeezed them one day and I made some sesuma jelly. Sesuma jelly. Mm -hmm. So we've been jellied up around here. We got Roselle, tea, wine, and uh, this is a little thicker. So the peptins 
pecked and packed okay. and yeah. it actually makes things thicken right. up. So I did not add any additional pectin to this. To the roselle. To because the roselle. it has pectins in it. It has a lot of pectin in it. Now this I did have to add pectin because the Sasumas didn't have. Satsumas. 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 Yeah. Yeah. You folks who don't know that's that little bit small mm -hmm. like a tangerine. Okay, so. That's a good flavor. It is. I, it is. I prefer the Roselle. Well, you got a lot of both to mm -hmm. eat. Yep. Okay. All right. And get to the show. Get to the show. So, all right. Here is our show today. What you should be doing in December. Now, we know December is your slow month garden. That's a given. Everything's cold. We're in that transition period down here in the south. You guys up north, y'all were in dead set in the wintertime. But, there's still some things to do. And one of the things you should do or think about doing is trimming some of your trees. Mm -hmm. Fruit trees, maybe if you got ornamental trees, and we're not big into talking about a lot of ornamental stuff. In my previous life, I do have some experience there. So in wintertime, it's time to prune trees, whether it be ornamental or food trees, such as yeah. fig trees, so I looked, pear trees. Our good friend Stark Brothers. Mm -hmm. And on their website, they have growing guides, sort of like we do, but everything about the different fruit trees. And just in general, as far as fruit trees, you want to prune when the trees are dormant, when they're through producing their fruit. And the leaves have dropped. Um, no, not necessarily. Like the citrus tree, they really don't ever drop there. No, they don't. That's the way I gauge. If I'm going to trim a tree most time, it's just drop mm -hmm. the majority of its leaves. So late winter, early spring, and when you're pruning, um, you want to prune and completely remove those suckers. Like the Satsuma tree has suckers mm -hmm. that drains the energy out. Remove any limbs that are diseased or dead. Or crossing. Or growing inwards. Right. So you want to keep the airflow within that tree so that things can go in there. And also that it looks good. Mm -hmm. So if you got a limb that's crossed up with another one in there, take that limb out and actually the look of the tree will do better. And it has more air circulation. It doesn't have so much disease problems. Right. And most of the, <clears throat> most of the fruit trees, you want to prune one third of the new growth off. Really? Is what Star Brothers mm -hmm. says. So now, there's, there's ways to prune correctly. Mm -hmm. And within the next couple of weeks, we got a video coming out showing you the correct way to, to prune. Because there is a lot of people don't realize the correct way. And there's a little term, I'm just going to give a little secret out here, okay? Collars. There's a collar on a tree, and it has something to do with the pruning. And we're going to be digging deep into that and showing people the correct way to prune so that tree heals up. Awesome. Mm -hmm. You didn't know that, did you? No, no, no. So also, your blueberries, you can trim them as early as late December. Now, it does depend on where you live. Um, blueberries, not blueberries, blackberries, it, you trim them depending on the type of blackberry they are. If they bear once or if they bear twice, if they're mm -hmm. ever bearing. Um, the main way I like to think about trimming blackberries is you want to be able to trim them so you get the most fruit. But you also need to trim blackberries with the thought and process of harvest. Right. So you make it easier for you to be able to harvest. If these limbs that's just flow, flowing out there that keeps you from getting there doing harvesting, you definitely want to trim those back. Right. Although it says the first year, you don't want to go too mm -hmm. heavy on trimming. Um, fig trees need very little trimming, mainly cleaning up the dead or diseased. Mm -hmm. or yep. Or sometimes, this is a rarity, Sometimes you want to top one out so it grows closer to the ground so you can pick those figs. Mm -hmm. So what's the point of growing a fig if it's 10 feet high if you we don't have a ladder to get it? So yeah, mm -hmm. take that consideration. There again, we're going back to trimming according to harvesting. So anyway, that's my little spiel on pruning. Yep. Uh, pruning is important. Of course, a lot of ornamentals need to be pruned during the winter time as well. You can get on your roses, work on them, and a lot of other things such as azaleas. We, mm -hmm. Here in the south, we grow azaleas. We trim those normally after they bloom in the springtime to have blooms the next year. But if you got some that's really got out of hand, you can trim them back and you're gonna sacrifice a few blooms there. But it's just a good time to take stake or take look at your landscape or your garden and see what's kind of gotten out of control with you a little bit. 
and uh, get it back into a manageable state. When it gets really cold, you want to protect those fragile plants. Mm -hmm. Such as what we're fixing to be into now is peppers and uh, some other plants. So if we was to get a hard freeze, like, like some of our friends up north do, this time to protect some of those plants, you can do that with these frost blankets. Mm -hmm. The peppers, some of the smaller ones, I just throw a five gallon bucket upside down over. Or we take an old blanket sometimes, yeah. like an old moving blanket and throw out there. Anything that just have insulated a little bit will work. You can mulch. Mulch, it's time to mulch asparagus plants, fruit trees, any kind of strawberries, strawberries, any kind of berries and things like that. It's a good time to mulch those. Here in the south again, we have our pine straw that falls this time of the year. That's good natural mulch. But it's just a good practice to mulch anything now and help insulate that roots from all that severe cold that we know we got coming along. Compost. Yeah, and uh, we're big in worm composting, but pretty much any composting you need to continue through in the wintertime because we end up having all these leaves and this organic matter that we don't know what to do with. So if you got a lot of leaves, it's good to put them up somewhere and try to compost it's them. It's good to put them in your worm bins. Let the worms compost. Talk about your worms a little bit, about how proud we are of our worms. I'm very proud of my worms. I have, I need to do a video on that. I have three containers of worms and that's where I get all my compost. I do add some of the gin in there, trash in there, but mostly for all my flower pots and my raised beds, I have one that I put mostly um, vegetable, like broccoli leaves, all that kind of stuff in there. Um, I have a little friend, George, that lives there too. George? Mm -hmm. Who is George? George is a little mouse. <coughs> He's took up homestead in your worm? He man? has, and, and he doesn't scare me. I don't, I don't scare him. I just it's let a, him. A cohabitant. A cohabitant, yeah. right. You let him live there. Mm-hmm. Um, then I got one that I just put mainly uh, recycled paper in, shredded paper. Um, and I feed them some chicken crumbles. And that consistency of that soil or compost is a lot different than I put the vegetable scraps in. I've noticed the one's thicker and fluffier than the other. Wow. So I'm convinced for the average homeowner, worms do a lot better composting they go into the traditional method of actually aeration and doing it in compost. We don't have to think about it as much. I think worms are the most... I mean, I put green, I put white, I put brown, I put leaves. But if you mess up, it's not as um, critical. The worms will take care of it for you. Yeah, I think worms are the under achievers that most people don't take advantage of in the garden. A worm bed is not that complicated and mm -hmm. they would destroy some leftover yeah, scraps. You gotta keep the moisture, I think, is the most thing. You don't wanna mm -hmm. let it dry out, but that's easy to do. Yeah, let's talk about winterizing your, your irrigation systems. So if you do have a drip system out there that you had out and you plan on leaving it and using it again in spring, which a lot of us do, mm -hmm. you can simply do that by all you need to remove is two things. You need to remove your filter regulator combo and you need to remove your fertilizer injector and put those inside so that they are protected. Leave your drip tape in the ground, you can leave your mainline tubing, it's not gonna cause an issue whatsoever because these are self-draining. And then when it comes time, springtime, all you gotta do is hook your filter regulator bigger, <coughs> filter regulator combo back up with your fertilizer injector and you're ready to go. Ba-boom. 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 Of course, we wanna cover up those spigots and stuff like that. This happens every year every year so come we get in a bad cold spell in and it starts they start talking about it on the news freeze warming all that hard freeze warming there is a run at the hardware store on pipe wrapping and everybody's down there and they sell out in no time and you can't get your power think ahead go ahead and do that sometime in advance i know it's hard to do but if you go ahead and do that in advance it kind of helps out a little bit especially because mm -hmm. we're going to have those days let's go ahead and prepare mm -hmm. for it Seeds. You Time know, to start planting. A lot of companies that send out their seed catalogs right now. We don't do catalogs because we ever change, I mean ever change, our varieties and all that and update and things like that. We quit doing catalog years ago. Yeah. In stock, out of stock. Yeah, a lot of people still love the catalogs. I get that. Believe it or not, I get a few catalogs from our competitors.
Just keep an eye it's on what's okay. going on. It's okay. It's yeah. okay. It just doesn't work for us. Yep. So kind of keep, uh, you know, do a little research about what you want to plant next year, what types of uh, tomatoes or peppers you want to plant. We have got some great new varieties that we are coming out with within the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. And we'll do a show on that at the end of December. Yep. Our new 2023 or, season. Or 1st of January, somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah, we will. We got some good ones there that we're proud of. But things have changed a little bit. There's some new varieties out there. And uh, maybe something you want to take advantage of. Be thinking about what you want to grow differently. Now, one thing I'm going to grow next year that I've not really dug into deep in the past is going to be herbs. Mm -hmm. So, kind of excited about that. Speaking I think, of, speaking of, let me, let me cross this bridge first. Speaking of, mm -hmm. uh, when is the best time to order your seeds? January. January, in my opinion, is the best time for you to order your seeds. Now, if you want to order some off the wall stuff, pack here and pack there that you see it's available somewhere, it's fine. But I think January is the ideal month to do, it, the first month you should do ordering of your seeds. Most times supplies are really good in January and everything is packed for 2023. So I think that's a good time. We're in the transitioning point now. We're transitioning into 2023. I have not talked to the uh, seed manager in the back in the last few days and see where that. Last time I talked to them, they was in the 60 to 70% range of having everything transition. So we should be real close. Mm -hmm. Transition for 2023. Speaking of. Oh, my uh, protege kitchen, new garden. I've almost got my little love communication area <laughs> set up, built. It is so awesome. How you doing with that? You coming along pretty good on it? Yeah, I'm doing real good. You got some help? <laughs> you got a little help, yeah. Yeah. A little help. You got it there and help, too. Yeah, let me just a little side note. Us guys getting in trouble when this, the lady brings a picture and says, I want it to look like this. That's troublesome. Yeah, time. It, it, I have to say, it has been hard to uh, not have any plans, and but y'all have done so well. I know, I know. Oh. I know. It's turned out. Preparing right. your tools. Now, you know, preparing those tools and in, in, it's normally a December, January thing for me. Mm -hmm. The It has to be one of those overcast days where there's not a whole lot going on. You have to be in the mood. You have to be in the mood and get in the zone. You go out there and kind of decompress, get your garden tools oiled up, get them cleaned up, Sharpen. get them organized again, sharpened again. So if you hadn't done that, December, January is an ideal time to do that. Then you'll be ready to roll. Ready to roll. Plant flowers, fruit trees, and berries. Mm -hmm. This is a good time for that, especially muscadines. A lot of people like oh, muscadines. Oh, I, uh, I need to do that. Mm -hmm. Any bare root things. Is bare right. root and container, but specifically bare root, because you can't plant bare root in the summertime. Now, I am not a huge fan of bare root plants. Mm -hmm. We do it every now and then, but it's not a huge fan. I like the container plants. The survival rate are a lot more a lot more, a lot better on those. But even your container plants, or if you plant bare root, December, January is a good time to do that. Think about some berries that you may want to grow. Big blackberries, blackberries, blackberries. blackberries. Yep. mulberries. We've already got into strawberries, you know, a couple months ago, but these, these other berries that you can plant now. Okay. Herbs. Herbs. You can grow those indoors right now. Mm-hmm. Yep, get them started well for transplanting into the uh, springtime. Mm -hmm. This is also the time of year you see in the big box stores all those big displays of bulbs for spring planting. Yeah, people get carried away with these tulips and things like gladiolas and other things. And that's not going to work. We've had some pretty tulips one year. Tulips are an annual for us, so we no. plant. Most people don't realize that, but here in the Deep South, we plant tulips. We get one year out of them, and they will not come for it. Unless Back you dig them up and then store them and plant them and again. And you know what? Everybody's got good intentions, but nobody yeah, does that no. much. So, yeah, if you want to plant some bulbs. They're pretty the first year, but then after yep. that, it's kind of. Yep. So what vegetables? Let's talk about vegetables, what you could do right now. I got some spinach planted mm -hmm. that I just planted this last week. And I got some beets, as we talked about earlier, just coming up. Onions that down in... Uh, Zone 10, they could still be planting onions, couldn't they? Yes, they could. And possibly some people in Zone 8. Uh, you know, here in some of the Zone 8, they plant some of the short-day onions, and I don't, all the way up into December. Oh, wow. 
So, yeah. so pretty much zone one through three, you need to be growing inside. You need to be staying by the fire. By the fire. Zone four to five, indoor. Stay by the fire. Zone eight to 10. You skipped six to seven. Oops, I can't count, okay. Yep. Six to seven, they can be growing some stuff if they protect it well, but they're gonna be limited what they can grow. Mm -hmm. Spinach is probably one of the most cold tolerant things out there with Swiss chard. And then this is on eight and nine. We got it lit, man, now through here. We can grow all winter long. Some things. Some things, so everything's good. December's the time to uh, kind of kick back, take stock where you're at, where you need to be. What you want to do. And you know Christmas is coming. Mm -hmm. Next week, we're doing gift ideas. So you want to make sure that you uh, get in for that. We're going to give you some gift ideas. And look here, this is not a sales type thing. We're going to give you gift ideas, stuff we don't sell. Yeah, it won't be all our stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's move on to the corny joke of the week. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, for you don't don't know, I never do the corny joke, but today I'm doing the corny joke. <laughs> and I figured it had to be corny. <laughs> Hence the word corny joke. Uh -oh. What happened to the two apple trees that were planted together? As you tell me, you should get this one. <laughs> uh -huh. They live happily ever after. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yep. You did good. I did, did good. good. Yeah. Did good. All right, the old goat is on vacation. Yeah. We got a great draw for the old goat right from here. last week. All right, boom, boom, boom. And we have Karen Humble. Karen Humble. Send us your shipping address to cuss serve at hosstools.com and we will get you a present. Yep, we'll get you a present in the mail. And the old goat's on vacation. On vacation. He, he, actually, he left out. He wasn't supposed to go on vacation to December 1st. Yeah. But he left early. So we have a fill in. Yeah. That is. The Grinch. The Grinch. Um, you could be a Grinch, you know that? No, I couldn't be a Grinch. I'm always got my good mood. So the Grinch is somewhere here on the set. So if you find the Grinch, put it in your comments below where you found it, and we will enter in your name in a drawing for next week for finding the Grinch. Mm -hmm. yep. And the Grinch will be here through the end of December. Yep, through the holidays. You almost put your hand in I that. did. I got three more biscuits over there I can eat. All right, folks, that kind of wraps us up. Talking about holidays, how was your Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving was good. <laughs> <laughs> My Thanksgiving was good. I ate too much. You ate too much? Yeah. You know what I heard? Nope. There was this uh, radio talk show host. He's about how much he ate. <laughs> it was so funny. Probably not funny anybody else. He said he ate so much his underwear didn't fit right. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot. I, I, I know his feeling. I felt the same way before. Yeah. Your underwear didn't feel uh, right. Underwear didn't feel right. We get it was good good holidays. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're getting we gotta slim down, get ready for Christmas. That's right. All right, folks. December things to remember to do. You know, may not can get out there and do everything, but there are some things you can do. So thank you for joining. Now it's time for you to get outside and get dirty.